Sage CRM for Sage Backpack ERP customers conference call. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star then the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, press the pound key. Thank you, Mr. Nisbet. You may begin your conference. Thank you, Darlene, and good morning and good afternoon to everyone involved, and we'd like to welcome you to our presentation today on the introduction to SAGE CRM for SAGE Act Back ERP. Um, it's, it's my understanding that everyone on the call today are customers or business partners who are currently using SAGE Act Back ERP. So uh, we welcome you to this, and I hope you get a lot of good information out of it. As Darlene mentioned, at the end, we will have a Q&A session. We we'll certainly uh, use the conference call capabilities to ask questions, but we also have uh, Q&A and chat capabilities via WebEx. So if you want to do it that way as well, that's fine. We're going to target about an hour for this. Uh, we might run a little short, might run a little long, that type of thing, and then we'll open up to questions after that. So let's dive right in. Let's find out about this whole CRM thing. Kind of going to take a, a three-step approach to today's presentation, and uh, I don't have a good understanding of everybody out there using ERP, whether you're familiar with CRM uh, at all. And so my approach in today's presentation will be the first to introduce you to CRM as an industry, as a concept, as a technology, that sort of thing. And then we'll move into the specifics of SAGE CRM and its capabilities. And then we'll get into a little more details showing SAGE CRM for SAGE Backpack ERP and showing some of the integration between the two solutions, what data gets passed back and forth, and, and how uh, SAGE CRM can specifically add value uh, to those using SAGE Backpack ERP. So that's the, that's the approach we're going to take. Let's start with first in general, what is CRM? It is technically customer relationship management. And in order to understand that term, we have to understand all the terms involved with that. And I want to define them specifically because they may be a little bit new concept to some people. For instance, the idea of a customer. There's a lot of definitions of what a customer is. Merriam-Webster defines a customer as one that purchases a commodity or a service. And that probably works real well with the definition of a customer in an ERP system. If you have a an accounts receivable customer, <clears throat> then they purchase something from you. Uh, if you're purchasing something from them, then they become a vendor. Uh, in the CRM world, customer takes a more generic uh, definition, and this is one I've thought of is that a customer is anyone who provides or receives something from me or my organization. That can take a whole lot of meaning. That can be the ERP version of a customer. Someone bought desk lamps from me, and in exchange for those desk lamps, they give me money. So they have received something from me, and they've provided something to me in form of a payment. A uh, AP vendor also falls into that category. They provide me with desk lamps, and they receive from me money. So they, too, would fall under this more generic concept of a customer. But one of my resellers also fits into that. If I have a reseller channel, like Safe Software does, my resellers receive products from me and give me cash. So in a, in a sense, they're a customer, too. Even my, um, <coughs> excuse me, even my investors are a customer to a certain extent because they are providing me with upfront capital and I am providing them with long-term investor uh, value. So there we're doing some things too. Um, I just got a notification that some are still on the welcome page. 
webcam Aaron or Yvette, can you guys see my desktop? Okay, so my desktop is being viewed. That's a good thing. Uh, Robert, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, it, it appears that, that let me know whether or not uh, you're seeing this or not, and uh, we'll try and get that solved. Okay. So we talked about investors, even to the point of an employee of mine is a customer of my organization because they provide to the organization value in whether their knowledge or their work or whatever they do for you in receipt of wages and benefits and so forth. So this customer concept can be applied to a wide variety of people. The screenshot that we see there to the right side of my slide just is is one of the examples of everybody that can be involved in this more generic umbrella concept of a customer. It could be a prospect, a competitor, industry analyst, you see all the things there. So it's it's a very wide open concept. What about in a relationship? What does the relationship piece mean? Miriam Webster again talks about a relationship as being a state of affairs existing between those having relations or dealings. And if you're like me, my first response to that is, huh? So, in my mind, having a relationship, it involves things such as time. You know, I don't have a relationship with, with somebody that I've never spent any time with. Uh, it involves communications. It, it, I certainly can't have a relationship with somebody that I've never talked to, you know, whether that's verbally or electronically or, or what have you. So it involves, over a period of time, a series of interactions or communications. But even so, that doesn't truly get to a relationship. A relationship is when I actually influence that other party's decisions, and they influence my decision. Over a period of time, we communicate and we influence each other. Is that true for a company and the people who buy their products? Absolutely. I want to influence that person so that they buy my product. And, of course, their needs and the market requirements and so forth are going to influence my behavior as well in the way that I present my product, in the way that I develop my product, and so forth. So I want to develop this relationship, and all things that are involved in that can be handled by this nebulous concept CRM, this technology and these uh, processes that we put in place. Of course, management, that's the easy part. Management, according to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, is the conducting or supervising of something. And in terms of CRM, uh, we don't want to just supervise in the sense that we're going to pay attention to what happens, but rather we want to be proactive and we want to drive others to do certain things. In, in the most obvious cases, we want to drive them to buy our product. So we're going to influence them so that it's mutually beneficial. They're going to receive something beneficial, and, of course, we're going to receive, as a company, we generally want uh, uh, profit. So that's the, the management. So that's CRM, CRM, Customer Relationship Management. It is more than just technology. Technology uh, often enables CRM, or excuse me, enables the management of these relationships. But it's also processes, policies, and in general, it's even an attitude. How do I want to conduct my business? Again, technology is at the core of enabling such things. So, CRM, the technology, if you, if you look at uh, product-independent communications, whether they be magazine articles or blogs or advertisements, you will often see that CRM is defined as technology that allows you to automate sales, marketing, customer service. Those are the three big pieces that the CRM solution influence, sales, marketing, customer service. And while that is true, it's also very incomplete. Most CRM products do a whole lot more than just sales, marketing, and customer service, but that's the baseline to, to cover all of them. More specifically, this is what CRM does, and I've, I'm probably missing pieces of this. There's personal workspace, so it uh, gives tools to the employees so that they can handle their work day in a, in a certain fashion. There's a subset of CRM called contact management that allows me to keep track of who the people is that I, that I talk to. Uh, names, phone numbers, addresses, emails, company 
and they have multiple opportunities to do business with the same person. So that doesn't necessarily mean the same thing as an account management, for instance. But it's opportunity management. It allows me to do forecasting and projecting of financials into the future. And team management, if I am a director of sales and I have a group of salespeople, this plays a part in the RM as well. Under the marketing automation piece, we have marketing campaigns, and we need to manage how we uh, deliver on those campaigns in, in the planning process, in the execution process, and then at the end, of course, an ROI analysis to see whether or not what we did made any money. Did it have an impact on our financial bottom line? In the customer care arena, that, that kind of takes two different flavors, customer service, hey, I need to check the status of my order, or tech support, hey, my widget is broken. Those are two different things, but they both fall in their customer care. We also have cases in, in terms of we need to find an answer to such and such a problem. And then potentially a knowledge base, whether you publish that knowledge base to, to an external audience or not, still CRM plays a role in maintaining a database of answers to, to frequently asked questions. And they can be very technical. Uh, the, the knowledge base industry has come up in often in, in technical arenas, uh, but still it can also be informal. But CRM plays a key role in that. Interaction management deals with communication with various organizations or persons, uh, entities of whatever flavor. And people today are involved in multi-channel communication, meaning that they want to talk to you by the telephone, but maybe they want to send an email or a live web chat, or maybe they're going to read a brochure that you sent them or a newspaper advertisement. So there are multiple ways that you communicate with these people and they communicate with you, but how do we handle all those different types of communication? Speed dial on my phone doesn't cut it. That's not CRM. CRM would uh, in general, we'll be able to handle all of those things. A very, very critical part of a CRM solution is business process automation. It's not just a database, but it automates some of the processes that I do in order to take workload off of me as an individual, as a human. It makes me more efficient, gives me more time to get human-related things done so the computer becomes a tool to me. Uh, it, it does that through what we call workflow, uh, which is also a generic term. You'll hear that in a lot of different places. Uh, but also through alerts and notifications where the computer or the system, the database, communicates with me to let me know what's going on. And finally, reports and business intelligence. If I'm collecting all this data, it doesn't do me any good if I can't see it and feel it and know what it's trying to tell me and understand it and have it influence my future decisions as well. Uh, I'm probably missing some pieces on what CRM is in general, but obviously it's more than just sales, marketing, customer service. So these are a variety of things, and we're actually going to go look at all these in St. CRM and see how it handles these various things. So to do that, we're going to switch away from PowerPoint slides to get into real software and go take a look at this. So let's do that. What we are looking at, I'm going to start on this one. What we are looking at now is Saint CRM. Uh, just some, some background information. The one we're looking at here is version 5.8, which is the current product that is integrated with Saint's ACPAC ERP. Very shortly, we will have a uh, Newer version, version 6, is expected in the next couple of months since it did. Stand by and you shall receive communications on when that's available and what, what's available, or uh, what new features are in it and so forth. It uh, has been released as a standalone product, but for integration with ACPAC ERP, 5.8 is the current product, so that's what we're looking at. The screen we're looking at specifically, and just to let you know this up here, Susan May. Susan May is in my demo database. It's this fictitious company that we've created for the purposes of demonstrating our software. Susan May is a sales manager. 
the screen we're looking at is her personal workspace. And just to kind of lay out what we're looking at is the top part of the screen where my mouse is, is the uh, contextual area. It tells me what I'm looking at. Right now I'm looking at my CRM, but we're going to see that change as we look at various things through the, throughout the product. But what it's showing me is the rest of the screen, what is it I'm looking at. Now the left-hand side, I have static action item or static and, and it, they do change every once in a while, but basically they're set and fixed, and that's why they're static. And so this is the major functional areas with Insights here. And you see here, my here, this is the my personal workspace that we were talking about. Here's marketing. Here's reports. So there's various pieces to this. And they, uh, this navigation bar on the left generally stays the same. I have another navigation bar way over to the right of the screen. This is a dynamic bar, meaning that it changes based on what I'm looking at. So you can see here that this, this set of action items is specific to the fact that I'm looking at my calendar and task. This would change if I were looking at a company record and so forth. We have up in this section a tab group. It, too, is dependent on what part of the system we're looking at. And the point of the tabs is, is simply real estate on a computer screen. The amount of information that I need to, to know uh, is so large that I could get overwhelmed. So we use a tab interface so that I can see only those things that I need to see. And, of course, tabs are, are very common throughout all of Sage products, including Sage, Axac, ERP. So, so Everyone should be familiar with that concept. And finally, the main workspace here. So, again, this is the personal workspace we're looking at uh, for Susan May here. This is her calendar and her task list. You can see that's uh, for today's date. She doesn't have a whole lot going on. Uh, that's just uh, a function of my demo database. What I'm going to do, though, is go back to July of 2006. And you can see here that's a better representation of a, of a calendar with appointments. You can see that our interface is driven by icons a lot. They uh, tell me what I'm looking at a, a lot more than just text would, so that makes it easier pleasing to the eye. I can see here, here's a vacation. If you, if you, uh, you know, once you learn the icons, they, they make sense. Here's a meeting. Here's a demo. Here's a phone call out meaning that I'm making the phone call. Here's some to-dos, some tasks. Here's a task list here. You can see as well that here's a phone call. I need to I need to uh, phone Bob Silver and remind him of our product demo. So here's my personal workspace. Speaking about that, let's go look at some of the contact management functionality. Contact management, in this case, uh, if most people are familiar with Outlook, so I will describe a little bit of how this differs from Outlook. Uh, but that's just to, to compare, you know, kind of a baseline. One thing that CRM is different than Outlook is that it has the concept of companies and person records, which I'm assuming you all are familiar with because you have companies and persons or accounts and people in your records at XPAC ERP. So here's a company record. You see the contact management piece of it. It does have the basic contact information, like addresses and phone numbers and email. Uh, but it has some more demographic information as well, such as employee size, revenue, who in our uh, in our company who is assigned as the account manager. You can see that I have other information though, like key attributes. Key attributes is uh, a part of Sage CRM that, that's very flexible and, and uh, very powerful, and we're not going to go into it in any great depth, but uh, typically things that I would do is more details about that company related to the industry that I'm in or they're in. In this particular case, the, uh, the fictitious company that we use for our demo database is a software company. And so if, if Gatecom Incorporated up here in the context area, if Gatecom 
that's the record we're looking at. If we're trying to sell them software, then we need to know things like what are they currently using? How many users do they have it? Are they willing to consider replacement and so forth? And like I said, this is very, very uh, flexible part of our system. So it would depend on what industry you are in as to what your key attributes are going to look like. But I also have individual notes, which I don't have any in my database here. But I've got addresses, I've got phone numbers and emails, and so forth. Contact management for a company record. In the company record, too, I have links to communication, sales opportunities, customer care cases. I even have a library here where I can add documents to this company record. Maybe there is a, a uh, sales proposal. Maybe there is a system configuration or what have you that, that needs to be assigned to this company. And I can see that in, in uh, attaching a Word document or a Visio drawing or an Excel spreadsheet. I also have people. These are the contacts associated with this account. And you can see here that I, in this particular case, I have three. So let's go look at Simon Yeltsoy. Now you see my contacts area changed. And so now, looking at addresses, it says looking at the company addresses, I'm looking at the addresses for that person. I'm looking at the phone numbers and the emails for that person. And one thing that I, I did not mention, but it's probably obvious at this point, what we're looking at is a browser. And so when I see things like this email address, it has an underline which is a hyperlink, which most of you are probably familiar with, and you see that my mouse changes. This is a web page that I'm looking at. One of the things that makes that beneficial is that people are familiar with web pages. They know how to use them. And so this should uh, make it easier for a new user to come up and run it on St. CRM. Okay, back to the contact management piece. Again, here we've got notes. We've got a communication list of the, of the uh, phone calls and the emails and the meetings and so forth that we've had with Simon Yeltsin. I've got sales opportunities. I've got customer cases, customer care cases, contact management. You see, I also have a library of documents and spreadsheets and visual drawings and what have you that I need to apply to Simon Yeltsin's record. Now, one thing to note is that a person record is in a layer that needs a company record, meaning that all of my communications that I look at for Gatecom include all of these for Simon Yeltsin, as well as those communications for the other uh, for the other people who work at Gatecom. So things float to the top, so to speak, and company records are at the top. Okay, so that's contact management. When we were looking at the capabilities of a generic CRM system, we also mentioned Salesforce automation. And that generally shows itself in the terms of opportunities and forecasting and sales team and, and so forth. Let's go look at those items. Again, as said, when we logged in the CRM, we logged in as Susan May, who is a sales manager in our fictitious software company. And if I look at, if I go back to the personal workspace, my CRM, go to opportunities, uh, I am going to, you can see that I have a method or a tool here that allows me to manage those opportunities. And what I'm looking at is a pipeline, color-coded in this particular case, graphical user interface, so that I can see that uh, I have two sales opportunities at the qualified stage, three at the proposal submitted stage, one at the negotiating stage, and one, woohoo, raise the uh, red flags and pour the champagne, we sold. Some statistics for all of this, and then here are the individual opportunities that we're looking at. I have the ability to filter this information, and with seven opportunities, I probably don't need to filter. But if I had 25, if I had 50, if I had 100 opportunities, <laughs> I very well might want to filter based on age or territory or status. And you can see here some opportunities to filter over to the right, but in this particular case, based on stage of topic, just click on a region. And you can see that now I'm looking at those three opportunities 
at the proposal submitted stage. If I want to look at details of any of the sales opportunities, I can do that. And I can see that this opportunity is for Simon Yeltoy of GateGum. I can go to their records by clicking that. See, my contacts area tells me the same thing. Here is a training course opportunity to sell to Simon who works for GateGum. Here is contact, basic contact information. Certainly not the details of his contact information, but his primary phone and his primary email. Here are some details here about what this sales opportunity is. 20 user training course. It was started on July 17th of 2006. Please uh, forgive me for having old demo data, demo data in my database. It's in the U.S. West territory, so I can have territory management as part of my uh, as part of my sales functionality, which of course territory management will go into more later, but it, it applies to more than just sales. But I have status. Here's where I'm at in this uh, current opportunity. It's in progress. Here's a forecast amount uh, for 120,000 euro. I think that's the size for euro, but that equates to 118 thousand dollars. So you can see here I have some multi multi-currency functionality in safe CRM. I have a certainty amount. I have 25% confidence that uh, by the time things are all set and done that I'm going to have this opportunity closed. I expect it to close at this point. And then here I have opportunity items. Here's my quote currencies that I have. In this particular opportunity, I've not signed any products to it. And grabbing products so forth is something that we're going to discuss a little bit later on. But here's what the opportunity is for. I can add notes to it. Here are the communications I have had specific to this sales opportunity. Obviously, this is not all the communications I've had with Simon Yaltoy because I've had multiple opportunities with Simon Yaltoy, and also I may communicate with Simon simply about getting together for lunch and see how he's doing that is not related to this sales opportunity. So, again, things float to the top, and uh, these communications float up to the person record, which floats up to the company record. I have a library that's tied to the opportunity, and I have tracking. If I want to track this sales opportunity, you can see that it started when Susan May qualified it, that it could be a big deal. Back then, she gave it a 10% certainty. It then progressed to a high priority. It then progressed to negotiation is getting tricky. I think we have to hold on price. So uh, forecast amount here is zero, and I don't know why it went to zero, but they did that. And then she submitted a quote. And that quote, now we've moved to back to the $120,000 price with 25%. You get the point. I can go through the history of this sales opportunity and how I changed these various stages could have been a manual process if I follow uh, just a, a wide opening salesperson does their own thing and, and uh, they're responsible for closing deals and we just take the orders when they get them. Or we could have automated this through workflow uh, where they have to follow certain procedures and the, the system does a lot of the work for the salesperson. That way the salesperson is selling if not doing data entry, those types of things. We're going to talk about workflow in more detail later. But this is opportunity management. Another aspect of Salesforce automation has to do with forecasting. Susan May is uh, the U.S. sales manager at our fictitious software company, and so she can do forecasting. Of course, the president of the company wants to get a financial view of what's going to happen over the next year, uh, because that impacts uh, their business in a variety of ways, so they do forecast. And here's the way I can do that. I've got uh, based on months, I have quotas, I have, uh, these are generic terms, commit likely a best case, gives me an idea of commit is in a forecast are those things that I am certain I am going to close by the end of this quarter. Best case means that if Everything happens, everybody's in a good mood when I talk to them, and so forth and so on, that this is the upside of what I could sell. Then this gives this central section here is not filled in uh, for the current quarter. Let me go back to, let's see, I think quarter three. You can see here in September that there are several sales opportunities that were slated to close in September of 2006. So those, the system is automatically bringing this by. One thing about forecasting that just blows my mind, but talking with uh, customers,
several years in this, to see companies that invest technology or invest money on technology to, to automate communications and to help the salesperson and so forth, and then they still use a forecast sheet on a piece of paper that the, that the salesperson writes out. Or if it, one step better than that is an Excel spreadsheet that they have to fill out. Here's a system that I can actually pull information out of my data based on where these sales opportunities are in the process so that my forecast is, number one, more efficient, um, and number two, it's far more accurate. Also, down here towards the bottom, you see sales, uh, Susan May is a sales manager, and therefore she has uh, four people here that report to her, and so if they were to do a forecast, that would flow up into Susan May, who's the U.S. sales manager. Her forecast would flow up into the worldwide sales manager and so forth. So you can see that I'm automating my forecasting process through this. Okay. Speaking of Susan May being a leader of a team, we had a personal workspace for Susan May. Here is a, not a personal workspace, but a team workspace for a particular team. And in our demo database, we have several teams involved. Susan May, being a sales manager, works as the direct sales team. So here, excuse me. So here I'm looking at the calendar and tasks of my entire team so I can see what the group is doing. Here's leads, which in this case we don't have any for these people. No wonder they're not selling anything. And here's the opportunities. Again, the opportunities we looked at before were for Susan May. This is for the entire team. You can see that with 66 opportunities at this point here, I may want to start filtering things. But my statistics start uh, meaning a whole lot more when I get more opportunities in there. Then, of course, cases. Direct sales team doesn't have any cases. But the customer service team certainly does. So here is my team management capabilities. Company management loves the features because they can see what everybody's doing. Not to the point, you know, the, the point of this is not to micromanage, although you certainly can use it for that. But at least now the management team has visibility into what's going on with my, with my own company. Okay, that's a lot of the Salesforce functionality. Let's look into marketing a little bit. Here in marketing automation, you can see that I can do campaigns. Here is a time and expense marketing campaign, which for our fictitious software company, time and expense is new software package that they're releasing. So they would do a marketing campaign that involves WAVE. Each WAVE involves WAVE activities. This is one of the strategic um, advantages that State CRM has is that we have three levels here, a campaign, a WAVE, and a WAVE activity. A lot of CRM solutions do not go to that depth. But you can see here that I am tracking costs. There's a campaign budget versus an actual cost. And what that comes from is when I look at a wave activity, I have a budget and a cost for each one of those things. And of course, they get added up to the top. Back to my campaign here, um, I can show analysis, which gets more into detail as to who's doing what and which, which pieces are are uh, effective and so forth. I have response set up. Maybe I have an outbound telephone marketing campaign that I need to set up responses of yes, no, and maybe. And so when I automate that and I want those calls to be presented to my telemarketing folks, here's where I can set those up. I can see the communication associated with marketing. I have some reports based on that marketing campaign. Of course, I could have a library for that. Uh, in this case, this is the global document library, but I can for the campaign as well. Okay, so that's some of the marketing automation. One of the things that uh, we really like about State CRM in terms of marketing, so many companies spend money on marketing and they don't know what they're getting for it. They spend money on a newspaper ad and radio commercial, but they don't have visibility into which 
lead, which um, advertising opportunity led to more sales? Was it cost effective to spend the money on the newspaper ad or not? You notice here in the wave activities, I have a variety of these. I'm going to go back to the sales piece. Let's go back to Susan Bay's opportunities. And here's a training course you see. Here's a wave activity. This is a poor example because I have not selected. But I can certainly do this and put in that the reason we even know that Simon Yonsoy is interested in this 20 user training course is that he said that he has responded to this email shot that we did. Now, what that tells me is that I can, over a period of time, take a look at that wave activity, that wave, or that complete marketing campaign, and see that we spent $100,000 in marketing and we got a million dollars in sales as a direct result for that. Now I can decide where my marketing budget ought to be spent to be the most effective for my company. Marketing automation allows that type of ROI analysis. Let's look at customer care for a moment. In order to do that, I'm going to change users. Now you can see I'm looking at my CRM for Kylie Ward. Kylie Ward is, in our fictitious company, the worldwide customer service manager. And here we see that uh, Kylie also has a pipeline in place, except for these are cases, not sales opportunities. Again, there is a process that we automate in dealing with customer care issues that we call cases. They could be, where's my order? They could be technical support type scenarios, which is in, in this demo database. They're generally more technical in nature because this is a software company, uh, a fictitious software company in our demo database. But here are my cases. So here I can look at case management. Again, I've got details about the case. It was found in this version of the product. That, of course, is a, a unique identifier. It allows me to deal with service level agreements. Uh, in this case, I may have uh, silver, gold, or platinum, or however uh, you handle service level agreements. Um, how did I find out about the case? What part of the product is it? And you see here is territory management that involves cases as well. And I have status. It's in process, progress. Here's who it's assigned to, and so forth. Like an opportunity that we looked at in the past, I've got notes that I could look at. I've got communication associated with this case. I've got a library that I can do, and I apologize for having an empty demo data. I just selected one and it turned out to not be the best choice for showing you this thing. Uh, but I also have tracking, like I did in an opportunity. See here, I have duration. In certain situations, uh, I would say in customer service, all situations, uh, timeliness is absurd. Uh, but in certain cases, I'd say it's more so than others. Depends on what it is I'm selling or providing to my customers. But I can track how long they've been at, at certain stages. And I can see here that I have a close by the date is 1903, which makes no sense. But in any case, here's a note. It says the file was installed, broke the leash perhaps, so they're investigating what happened, what went wrong, and so forth. So you can see here that uh, in this case I'm sorting the other way. So it was logged that I'm investigating, that I'm investigating, that I'm still investigating the problem. I also have and here's my knowledge management capabilities and states here of a solution. I don't have, in this case, any solutions assigned to this case, so maybe I haven't found the answer yet. But if I go find a solution, let's go look at all the solutions in the database. Here is a solution. The, the problem was how do I run a monthly expense report, and here's the answer to that. Go to the reporting tab available through the main menu, select monthly, and so forth. Solution is separate than a case because I can have multiple cases tied to one solution. For instance, I can have five different customers who are saying, you know, I can't.
can't log on to my software. And they all have the same answer to that. So I can have multiple cases assigned to a solution. But I also can have a case with multiple solutions because not logging on to the software involves an installation issue, a configuration issue, and a user setup issue. So I can have multiple cases assigned to a solution, multiple solutions assigned to a single case. And like a case, I can have communication, the library is tracking, I track solutions because when I find an answer, I, uh, I believe I've found the answer that I test it, I might even send it to a quality assurance group to verify that the solution is right, and at the end, I may publish that. If I'm using, say, CRM web self-service capabilities, I may publish that to my website so that my customers can find solutions on their own without having to dial in. So those are solutions and cases. You can see here, this particular one, there's no cases assigned to this solution, but I can link cases and solutions back and forth. So that's customer care. Let's look. One thing that we talked about, and I'm going to go back to Tuesday to see it. Let's talk about interaction management. We said that was one of the functional areas of a generic CRM solution. Here's how Sage CRM does that, is, is through the tracking of communication. Communication can be an appointment or a task. And an appointment, generally, the difference between the two, an appointment has a set time. Like us today, we have an appointment today at 10 a.m. Pacific to watch this webinar. Uh, it's got a start, a specific start time and an end time. Or I have a task, which is I have to fill out this form by Friday. So that, that's more on the task side. But both of those are communication types. And you can see here that I have a variety of communication types. Here's all the ones. Here's the actions, sorry, that I have in our system. I've got a vacation, phone out, phone in, letter out, letter in, emails, faxes, meetings, demos, whatever. Uh, that is certainly customizable. I can come up with any type of interaction possible uh, as my action type. So there I'm handling those multi-channel communications. It's important to know that, though, because if I am not using a CRM solution, uh, it's, it's a lot of companies will wind up being guilty of this problem. If I call you, I can get an answer. If I email you, it goes off into the ether world, and I may get a response five days later. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen, but unfortunately a lot of organizations are guilty of that. Uh, and some people like email because if I have to call in and that company has a 20-minute wait time before I can even talk to a person, that's no fun because I'm in a hurry, so I'm going to send you an email. So a CRM solution allows uh, a central repository of all communications regardless of the channel, regardless of the method that was used to do that communication. Now, if I'm going to build back at the core, core mission of CRM is to build profitable, valuable relationships with my customers, if I'm going to do that, I generally need to provide a level of consistency and exceeding expectations. The way I can do that in a CRM solution is through automating a lot of these business processes. Let's go look at some automation. Now I'm switching over to a view for a system administrator, and I'm going to go set up workflow, wherever it is. Okay, this is one of those cases, here it is, where the presenter had a brain freeze, so I apologize. But anyways, workflow. I can apply workflow to any number of entities in my system. The more common ones are opportunities, lead, cases, solutions. But I can have multiple processes in place. And what happens, let's, let's talk a sales opportunity. Here's the workflow as I see it. 
Landscape CRM allows graphical design of workflow. And you can see here, this is a decision tree. I start here, I get a new opportunity, it becomes a lead. A lead can either be qualified or we can go straight to a proposal submitted where I've sent them a quote. If I've qualified that lead, now I can start negotiating with them. I can give them a written proposal or I can do a demo with them while they're uh, to show them whatever it is that I'm selling in this case software. I'm negotiating. Then I send them a proposal or that negotiation led to a deal. And you can see this here. These are states and rules. Here's my rules. Here's my state. We're not going to go into it in any greater depth than that because um, the purpose of this uh, presentation today is not to show you how to create state CRM workflows. The point being is that I can automate processes. Each one of these rules has a multiple have multiple actions associated with that. So with a single click of a button, I can initiate six different actions. For instance, if I click in a sales opportunity, sold. So I click six things, and now I have a standard process that when we sell an item, we are going to send an email to the customer thanking them for the business, schedule a uh, thank you phone call from the sales manager, again, thanking them for their business, a schedule a customer service manager 30 days later to call the customer and ensure that they are happy with uh, the way the whole process went. Maybe I emailed them a survey. Uh, whatever the case may be, through a single click, I can cause all of those things to happen. That makes me more efficient, but it also makes me more uh, consistent because uh, the way salesman Joe and salesman Susan do things are the same. That provides uh, familiarity to our customers. That uh, provides loyalty because they know what to expect. So we develop those valuable relationships over time. Also in workflow is we have the ability to do alerts and notifications. When we were talking customer service, we were talking um, service level agreement. So if I'm in a situation where I have a service level agreement, I have committed to this particular customer that when they report a problem to me that I will respond to them within four hours. Well, if three hours have gone by and nothing's happened, maybe the customer service manager wants to know that so that they can get involved. So let's have the system page the customer service manager. Or let's have the, the system send an SMS message uh, to their cell phone so that wherever they are, they're alerted to the fact that we are uh, getting close to the service level agreement violation so that they can make sure that we don't violate that agreement. If we're in sales opportunity and a sale uh, gets proposed that's over a quarter million dollars, let's send an email notifying the president that we are, you know, that, that a proposal has been submitted for this really large key strategic deal. Whatever the case may be, uh, this becomes a tool for business process automation, which enforces uh, management desires for the way they want to conduct business. But it also provides each individual person with increased efficiency in getting their workload done. The last thing we're going to look at, and I'm going to go back to Susan May, is reports. We have collected all this data uh, about our phone calls, about our emails, about our forecasts, about our customer care, so forth and so on. But if I'm going to make sense of all of that so that I influence my own behavior, then I need to be able to see some summary reports on those things. You can see we have reports in a variety of, of capability or uh, functional areas here. We also have what's called a dashboard. Dashboard in same CRM uh, can give me uh, graphical outputs. I don't these are none of these are graphs, but gives me a way to view into information and filter data and present it in a way that is useful to me. At the sales dashboard, which is the only one that they have available. Let's go look at the system administrator. And he does not have any dashboards enabled. 
SEER is a customer service dashboard, and this just highlights some of the graphical capabilities that they SEER would have, so that I could, as a customer service manager, which is what this person is, a quick snapshot as to uh, the status of my customer service department, what they're working on, and, and are they being successful, and so forth. So, that is a 30,000 foot view of state CRM in general. Now, let's go and look to a little bit more specific about how Sage CRM works in conjunction with Sage Act ERP. Let's look at the integration between the two systems. And to do that, we're going to go in as a system administrator just because that's the way we've got it set up. And I am going to look at a company record. And if you have been using uh, Sage CRM, or excuse me, if you have been using Page Backpack ERP, you may be familiar with some of these demo database terms or, or what have you, but I'm going to compare a company record here in just standalone state CRM. And you see certain things, company, website, segment, territory. Let's just focus on those four things in a company record. Now, when I look at it integrated, I see more information. Now it's pulling the ACPAC ERP customer number for this particular company. Uh, Mr. Ronald Black serves as a company, and then Ronald Black is a person assigned to that company. So let's just go back to the company record here. Uh, there's a customer number here. Again, a segment of territory, a customer group that gets pulled from ERP. You see a tax group information. Terms, credit terms, and credit limits. Why is this important? I can certainly find all that information out of ERP. Well, here's why it's important. If I am a salesperson in that company, I probably don't have access to customer records, right? Uh, financial data is, is very sensitive information that we don't just let anybody look at. But these particular items, for instance, credit terms, may determine the paperwork that I prepare myself with before I make a sales call to Mr. Ronald Black or, or what have you. Uh, you can see here uh, that if I want to get into more information about credit with Mr. Ronald Black and assuming that I have rights to do so, we can, we can you know, decide who gets these, this information and who doesn't. But I can look at the credit info. Why does this help? As a salesperson, this helps me because I can see that they're not on the hold. If I've got a customer on credit hold, why am I going to waste my time trying to sell them something when I can't take the order anyways? So you can certainly see the information here in terms of why does it help the salesperson. Let's look at a different scenario. How does it help the financial people? Here's how. I'm going to go find a company called Gatecom. Gatecom Inc. is not in my ACPAC uh, ERP solution. Maybe they're a sales per or uh, they're a company I came across um, because I've got a personal friend working there. They visited our booth at this local trade show. They saw an advertisement or what have you. And so I've started to work with them as a salesperson. But now they're going to buy and I need to get that information. Well, I can. Uh, Write all that down and hand it to the financial, the accounting people. I don't want to do that. Because um, then I'm order entry, think of the time it takes, and so forth and so on. But here, through the integration, I have promote to customer. So uh, here I can enter ACPAC details for a new customer. I can find this information. I may have access to this. Again, what I see on here depends on what access I have, obviously, but this allows integration between the two. If I go back to a, a customer who is uh, integrated, then Mr. Ronald Flack, you can see that I've got address information, phone numbers that go back and forth, and so forth, that uh, get, get transferred between the two systems. Let's start ERP so that we can look at some of this integration. I'm going to open up Backpack. Okay. I am not pirating the 
software I work for the company. <laughs> so, at, at, at a core level, uh, we found out that their address changed, so I'm going to go to accounts payable, or excuse me, accounts receivable, I'm going to look up customers, customers. As I was preparing this, I learned that Mr. Ronald Black is number 1200, so I'm just going to know that that's what he is. Okay. And I'm going to say that that uh, my financial people, the people on my ERP system, maybe it came through shipping, maybe it came through uh, when I sent them a bill or whatever, I found out that this is that's not what I wanted. Let's close out of that. No, let's try this again. 1200. I have Mr. Ronald Black. Sweet 200 of Wabash Road. I'm going to save that. It is saved. Okay. Now, um, if I come over here, everybody who, who works uh, with these guys sees the updated address. So now I'm exchanging information. I don't want to have two sets of addresses and two sets of phone numbers and so forth and so on because Mr. Ronald Black may have told that new address. He's going to expect that entire company to be aware that his company moved. Or if their phone number changed and got updated, he doesn't want to tell 12 different people in your company that his phone number is different. So those are the basics. Uh, addresses and phone numbers, but, but that is something to be aware of. We already talked about the ability to see credit information. We also have AR inquiry. Now a CRM user who's got access to all of this CRM functionality can also take a look at some posted transactions uh, for Mr. Ronald Black. And here's an invoice. I can see his invoice because while I'm out there selling him something new, he said, you know, I never received an invoice or, or, you know, I want some details on that. And here I can see it. And by doing so, I've actually gone into the record in Backpack ERP. Okay, so I have AR capabilities. I also have integration with order, uh, order entry. So here's some orders and quotes. Here's some future standing. You can see some information that I have here. The point of, of today's webinar is not to go into every single detail in the integration. And so basically we're going to stop here with that. But um, the thing that I want you to take away from this webinar is to see the value of CRM and how it can help your organization, not just the financial people, not just the users of ERP, but the organization as a whole. But Anytime you do that and you've got disconnected systems, that can cause some issues. So see that they are integrated. See how the information flows between the two and see how it benefits everyone. It benefits your salespeople because they have access to the information that's on the ERP system without having to go bug the accounting folks to get it. And uh, you can restrict who can see what and so forth. It helps the accounting people to allow them to do their job without having to take all these silly questions by all these sales people or by these customer service people. And ultimately, who wins by having this? Ultimately, the customer wins. The guy who is buying products from you or services from you, he wins because he's got a more efficient, more fulfilling relationship with you and will more likely be a customer for life. Okay, one thing that you need to be aware of is we have a offer that we've presented that's good through the end of March that if you are an existing Sage Backpack ERP user and you want to add the CRM capabilities now that you've gotten excited about Sage CRM and all that it can do for your company, we are going to give you a server license. All you have to do is purchase the user licenses. And then we do have the software assurance, which you uh, are probably familiar with with your ACPAC ERP. That's the maintenance uh, uh, 
uh, that's our term for our ongoing maintenance so that you can keep up to date on the latest releases and updates and all that kind of thing. So you do have to pay for that. But we want you to have CRM. We believe it's going to be a benefit to you. We hope that you're excited about it, and we're allowing you to get it without having to pay for that server uh, to really make it easier for you to get into CRM. In doing so, we've uh, sent out some direct mail pieces. You uh, have probably seen these, and that's even potentially how you uh, first got informed of today's webinar. So you may have seen these, but these tell all the details of this special offer, uh, gives you an some links and some more information and so forth. If you have any questions on the special offer, feel free to call us, uh, email us, or visit this web page uh, in order to get more information and request information. We'll contact you. Everybody who has attended today, today's webinar, uh, will receive this slide deck. I'll email it out. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you can write this stuff down, but I'll certainly be sending it to you as well. That concludes my presentation for now. Let's uh, go to question and answer. So, Darlene, if you could uh, please assist us, assist us in getting questions. While she's doing that, actually, Darlene, uh, if you would please instruct everyone on how to ask a question. At this time, I would like to remind everyone, if you would like to ask a question, press star and the number one on your telephone keypad. We'll pause for just a moment to compile the Q&A roster. And your first question comes from the line of Douglas Beckerman. When people are accessing uh, the AR inquiry from Sage CRM, it then opens up ACPAC. Is that taking an ACPAC license as well? Licensing issues is a great question, and it does take a license to, to get to that point where I can open up ACPAC. Now, certain things uh, do not take a, a license. Um, hold on, let me... Uh, uh, so let me go over here. Certainly stuff like getting this information, coming to my summary screen and getting this information, that does not take a license. If I am going to go into AR and use this as an interface into this information to where I actually pop up a Sage Backpack ERP screen like this, then yes, I have to have a license on the ERP system to get in. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Lindsay Hill. Hi, Lindsay. Uh, good morning. We use uh, ACPAC. We'd like to um, add CRM as well. We would like to integrate both our customers and our vendors, um, you know, between between the, the two programs because we would like to track all our interactions with our suppliers as well as with our customers. Yeah. How hard is that? That is very, very easy. When I'm setting it up and I install CRM, First, I install Saint CRM, and then I install the integration piece. And through that process, I have the ability to import into my CRM database both my customers and my vendors. So I can integrate with both AR and AP. So it's, it's, we've automated that process and, and uh, facilitated that to make it a very simple process. So I can do that quite easily. So then, would it be reasonable for us to, say, use the Cases tab for us to keep track of, say, ongoing? Uh, we install big uh, engineering systems, and so could we sort of interact, you know, do that interaction with our suppliers and with our project progress, say, through the Cases tab, and then do the normal uh, customer Salesforce relationship on the sales side with other tabs? Absolutely. Yep, that's, that's, a, that's a great way to do it. Fantastic. Thanks. Great way to do it. And, and again, if you would like to ask a question, press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. And your next question comes from the line of Linda Sepulhoff. Hi, Linda. Hi. Further to that uh, last question, if you did import both customers and vendors, how would you be able to separate them within the views that you see? 
I'm not here, Mr. Ronald Black. I have a type. Okay. And so and that type can, can show. It depends on how you have it set up, and I can call that type. If I look here, uh, this type is, does not allow me. That's not what I was looking for. Uh, it does not allow me to change that because that's pulling data out of the ERP system uh, to do that. Uh, that is a type customer. Okay, so I know in my ERP system, this is a customer, not a vendor. Okay, uh, if I wanted to see my all of my all of my uh, vendors yeah, in a single view, can I do that? Sure. That's not doing it either. Let me find. Okay, if I if that's what I want to do, I have the choice to find a company, and um, I can search by company name. Here's a case type customer. There's my customers. I see type vendor. Or I can see my type vendor. Supplier or whatever. And I don't know, you know, it depends on how you set this list up that I'm looking at. I see dormant customer prospect. I can define that list as whatever I want. Okay. Okay. So maybe all my things are in supplier. Okay. So uh, it depends on how I have it set up. But uh, customers and vendors, I can certainly select those. Uh, I may call it partners, which I know is not, I don't believe that is a uh, category in Backpack ERP, but, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be either, uh, the way I set this up. So, straight out of the box, yes, uh, customer and vendor uh, get pulled out of ERP and put into CRM, and then here's how I just, I just go search for them. Okay, thank you. Sure. And your next question comes from the line of Douglas Beckerman. Hi, Douglas. Hello again. A uh, question for you on uh, as far as salespeople being able to uh, enter orders within the system. Um, what's going to happen as far as uh, the ability to put them into Appack? And uh, then getting onto the inventory side, will the inventory items be sent back to the CRM? Inventory items, uh, let's deal with that one first. That is not, does not get synchronized uh, okay. at, at this point. That is one of the requests that we have had and we hope to have in a future version of the integration. Uh, as far as promoting an opportunity to a order, um, let me see if I can. I have to look, unfortunately. I have an opportunity. I have to have a close by time. Reminder. Macaroni grill. I didn't 
in the middle. I'm going to look at that macaroni grill. You may press star then the number one on your telephone keypad. And you have a question from Susan Neal. Hi, Susan. Hi. Um, just uh, talking about salesman access and doing quotes and that, my understanding is um, if you have outside salespeople, they can um, access this over the Internet? Yes. So um, once they've gotten into the CRM over the Internet, they would have access to ACPAC from outside the office? If we want them to. Okay, so we can control that. We can control that. Okay, great. Yeah, we can, we, that, that's a configuration. That is one of the benefits of Safe CRM. Is, it is a web product. I am looking at a web page, mm -hmm. which means that uh, if I have it set up right, I can view that information anywhere in the world. Okay. Okay. Now, you have to be careful uh, and think about that in, in certain situations. Um, you know, there's ways to control that. I can do it through HTTPS which I don't have set up right now. You can see it's just HTTP, so it's not a secured website, but I could do that. Or I could control access using a virtual private network, mm -hmm. uh, VPN technology, and so forth and so on. There's ways to do that, and that is certainly uh, one of the primary things that you need to think about and plan when you're implementing one of these integrated solutions. But at the core, yes, it is a web page, and so that gives me the, the capability of getting to this information wherever I am. Okay, and it has a synchronization um, feature as well, I believe, that lets you download to a Palm Pilot or something like that? Actually, no. Uh, well, okay. actually, let me take that back. Let me qualify that. Sage CRM is a web page. So if I can hit a web page from my PDA, then I can access Sage CRM. Okay. Um, if I'm using the PDA, though, like a pocket PC that I'm at the local coffee shop that's got Wi-Fi and I log in, there's a lot of the ERP stuff that I can't get to even if I wanted to because I'm looking at it in the PDA. Um, for a Palm Pilot, Palm Pilots are different uh, simply because of the operating system um, and I don't know. I, I'm not a Palm expert, so I don't know if they've got live web pages you can view and so forth. Simply looking up their uh, addresses and phone numbers and that sort of thing on a Palm Pilot. One way that I can do that is save CRM integrate with Microsoft Outlook. And I have used this uh, when I ran my own business, uh, used save CRM. Uh, I synchronized with Outlook, and Outlook synchronized with my Palm Pilot. So in that particular case, I can get to some of the information. So. The answer to your question is it depends on a whole lot of variables. Okay, but if, if they're working on their uh, notebook, say they're not synchronizing to another piece of equipment, but they're sitting in their car, they don't have access to any kind of, they don't have any Internet access, would they be able to complete um, call information, at, you know, do additions to their calendar, for example, and then have that information uploaded somehow to the main system when they do connect? Yes, yeah, State CRM has that capability through a function called Solo. But okay. Solo does not work with the ERP integration. So if they are just using State CRM, then it works fine. But we have not gotten offline access to ERP. Okay, so even the summary credit page, they wouldn't have that information either? That's correct. Okay, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Again, press star 1 to ask a question. I think we're kind of uh, coming close to where we had planned on uh, having this ended, so if we don't have any other questions, let's just leave it at that. And we do have a follow-up from, a I, I apologize, we do have a follow-up from Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi again. Uh, my question is, for all the questions that have been asked, are you going to be publishing them, them and the answers? But I can. Okay. <laughs> I can. That's probably a good idea. Okay, uh, thank you. So, uh, oh, um, here is, is, is one thing I probably failed to mention, and I don't think I mentioned it. This entire webinar has been recorded, and that the link to that recording will be sent to all of you so that you can view this presentation again. Feel free to distribute it to other people in your organization who uh, potentially did not have the opportunity to see it. Uh, we will be doing
doing another webinar uh, just like this. And then, fortunately, right off the top of my head, I don't know exactly when that is. Um, so that, can you help me out on March 15th at what time? At 1 p.m. Pacific. Thanks for that. March 15th, 1 p.m. Pacific. We're going to be going through this again. So um, we have that available to us as well. But I will uh, I will go through the Q&A uh, section of this and and document the questions and answers as well. So uh, good talk. So at this point, um, we look at both Safe CRM and the integration with ERP at a very high level. There is a lot to it that, that uh, in details that you may have exactly how does this work or does that happen and so forth and so on. For that, I would strongly suggest that you get with your uh, Sage Backpack business partner, the ones who provide you with Sage Backpack ERP. Uh, they are either certified on our CRM product or they have the ability to get with ones who are certified with our uh, CRM product. They uh, can also certainly work with Sage itself uh, to get you the information you, you need. If you want a personalized demo, they're the ones that can facilitate that as well. So we can make that happen. If, if you've seen things here that you like and you want more information, then uh, I would encourage you to visit this website that we had up there and request more information and we get done through that. At the same time, if you do have other questions, uh, don't hesitate to contact me and there's my email address on the screen. So at this point, I'd like to thank everyone for attending today. I appreciate your attention. I hope you found 